Okay, um, my name is Hrvoje Hafner. I'm coming from a, a smaller town in Croatia called Kutina, near Zagreb, but uh, five years ago I moved to Zagreb to work in Croatian Telecom. Uh, and uh, as uh, Jason also, I'm actually somehow a tech, tech expert and working there on developing of uh, service platforms. Uh, I got uh, involved in crowdfunding uh, as soon as um, first projects got rolled on Kickstarter. I was a backer on uh, many of them, not only on Kickstarter, but also on Indiegogo. I used all uh, crowdfunding models to invest in projects, not only reward-based and uh, donation-based uh, platforms, but also uh, loan-based and some of the equity-based. Um, so uh, after after a while, I uh, discovered that there is no much media traction in Croatia about this phenomenon. So I started working on a, a blog, uh, crowdfunding.hr, on which I write about Croatian projects and follow the whole uh, industry behind it. So I'm not writing only about Croatian projects, but also projects which are let's say in ex-Yugoslavian region and what's happening on, on that field. Um, but besides, besides that, I had some uh, altruistic urge uh, and I got involved in many NGOs. And since the beginning of this crisis, I discovered that there is a lot of um, um, uh, not, not capital and investments uh, went in NGOs, but uh, uh, the, the, the government couldn't deal uh, enough because of the crisis and give money to NGOs to support their activities. So I decided at one point to build uh, a cr first Croatian crowdfunding platform. And it's called Doniralica. It's a uh, Croatian word. Uh, I, I don't know how I translate it in English, but maybe you guys from Slovenia know how to... Do, uh, how to uh, how to, what, what does it actually means? Uh, also, I get some a lot of uh, questions. Uh, how, how do you uh, translate Croatian? Uh, how to translate crowdfunding in Croatian? I don't know about you, Slovenian guys. How do you uh, translate it? Do you have like one word, or you have to like use two words? In Croatia, it's also. But uh, I think uh, this is also a problem. It would be great if in our native language we could use some word to describe what's actually idea behind it. Uh, Donirlica is still not uh, operating. We are hoping that it's going to be operating in uh, this year and it's going to be used only for community projects, actually for uh, NGOs which will run their uh, specific project-oriented campaigns to uh, raise awareness about topics they're dealing with. Um, why crowdfunding? So this is like more general question of why would we use crowdfunding, but I'm guessing that most of you know uh, what is the logic for you to use it, you know, to get the traction, to get the media, to get uh, the, the, our idea out and to, to make some kind of market validation in which we know that uh, what we want to do with our project and what maybe in our project we have to improve. Also, we like to think that crowdfunding is free money. Of course, crowdfunding is not free money. Um, a bank will uh, take a commission on a credit that it gives you, but uh, if you're running a reward-based or even equity-based uh, campaign, then you know that you have some obligations toward the backers of your project. Uh, but uh, there are some reasons maybe not to, you, not to use uh, crowdfunding, uh, or let's say better that some projects that cannot deal with crowdfunding successfully, because um, I'm a lot of involved in a startup community in Croatia, and there's uh, all the time popping out uh, startup uh, conferences and workshops and everything. And uh, what everybody tells you, all uh, all the mentors say that you know uh, your idea is worthless unless you are going to invest not the money but your work in it. Uh, there are plenty of ideas, but there's not so many people who can actually uh, provide the thing that is needed to idea to live. 
because I, I think that uh, a lot of these experts know that actually uh, many of the projects uh, which are run successful campaigns on Kickstarter or any other platform actually have problems uh, in uh, dealing with the um, time schedule that they promised, you know. You said, okay, if we get uh, this much money, we will ship you our first gadget next day in the morning. But we know that this, this isn't true, especially if we get too much money and we didn't think about how to, how to uh, produce that much, uh, uh, to, we didn't set up the whole production process to, to actually place the, 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 the product in the market. Um, one of the things that is uh, also problematic for uh, projects which are run on Indiegogo is uh, actually that there's too much noise. Too much noise in sense that every project owner who runs a crowdfunding campaign can only uh, press the button which has a label on it, go live, and that's it, you know. It's on Indiegogo and now you have to do something about it to fight your way to get on a top page. But, only, but not only that. Uh, also, uh, a problem with crowdfunding is that Yes, okay, you can get money, but the thing is that you cannot get the uh, needed expertise uh, to, to, ma to manage your whole cycle of uh, producing the thing. Because even with uh, maybe uh, m with the banks, they require you to make a business plan. Or VCs, they need some traction uh, so that you can prove that you have a good product. But only, not only that, but VCs or the banks are looking at your project on every step and trying to help you how to cope with the problems that you get. And in crowdfunding, you don't get that. You get only money, and now you're out on the open for yourself to figure out all the problems. Um, what, what I'm thinking, and I'm glad that I'm here in Slovenia and talking about these, these topics because I think that Europe is specific uh, market for crowdfunding uh, and I think that not the same, I, I think that princi same principles cannot be applied. Uh, because if we're talking about crowdfunding, then in, in small nations or s small states, we can easily fall in a trap uh, not to have the actual crowd. I mean, in Slovenia, there's two million people. In Croatia, there's four million. So where, where's the crowd, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what's, what's happening in Croatia is that <laughs> uh, uh, I talked to a lot of um, uh, national agency and national financial agencies on what is their stance on, on, on this topic. And the actual response is that we don't know what's, what's crowdfunding. We heard something about it. I think we'll wait for some kind of EU policy. You know. Uh, once again, I'm going to thank Polygon and, and all the guys who work here uh, and uh, uh, called me to show up here. Uh, co-working and co-working and working on uh, projects which are which are actually globally. Uh, can globally be exposed is the future of, of, of crowdfunding. So I'm thinking that only, uh, only projects that will, uh, that will have global potential will be able to succeed and domestic crowdfunding platforms should and will in the end turn only to uh, small scale community projects. Thank you very much. Thank you for that.